The following segments are pre-recorded and sponsored by Longworth Productions. Honoring Black Business on Triad Today. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Longworth and welcome to another edition of Triad Today, coming to you once again from the beautiful Senior Botanical Garden in Kernersville. We'll tell you more about them later on and later on is when the roundtable shows up. We'll get into all sorts of controversial topics then, so I hope you'll stay tuned for the entire half hour. But where we want to start is talking about a big, big, big event. And we have three gentlemen that are going to help us with this topic. Our special guest who's been with us before, we're glad to have him back. Richard Williams is publisher of Black Business Inc. magazine. And he's here through the courtesy and the good graces of our good friends, David Daggett, Griff Schuler from Daggett Schuler. Welcome, gentlemen. Good to see you. Hey, Jim. Good to see you. Uh, Richard, I want to spend a few minutes with you first. First, remind folks what Black Business Inc. magazine is all about and how they can subscribe. Yeah, Black Business Inc., Jim, um, is, is, was founded in 2003, and it is based in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. But we cover the triad. We cover black business throughout the triad. Uh, we started in 2003, and we're celebrating our 20th anniversary uh, this year. And people can subscribe. Uh, by going to Black Business Inc. Uh, BlackBusinessInc.com. Inc. is spelled I-N-K, not I I-N-C. It. That's right. Um, so they can subscribe that way. And I'm going to put that up later on so people will know. Now, you have a big event coming up on June 8th. What is that? We have our 20th anniversary awards gala. In this, in this um, instance, how we're going to celebrate our 20th anniversary. Black Business Inc. has named the Power 100, which represents 100 of the most influential and powerful organizations and individuals throughout the state of North Carolina. We're proud to have 90 outstanding individuals and we're recognizing 10 nonprofit organizations. And, and, and one of the proud things about our Power 100 is it represents 28 uh, municipalities from across the state of North Carolina, as they say, from Manteo to Murphy. And we have an outstanding list uh, full of outstanding entertainment on June 8th. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because, uh, you know, we're at Triad Today. will celebrate its 20th anniversary in October. And during that time, I'm proud to say we've had at least a dozen of these good folks that you're going to be recognizing. They've been on the show before. Now, that leads me to piggyback on your first statement, which is if, they're, if these folks are coming from all over the state, uh, how are they nominated? Uh, that's that's exactly how how they got on the list. They were nominated. Uh, we we put the nomination forms on our on our website and on social media beginning last fall, and we had a just a cadre of of, of great nominees. And 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 obviously, Jim, in a, in a situation like this where you're going to have a limited number of opportunities, you always have much more qualified individuals than you have Absolutely. spaces for, which is why I'm number 101 on my own list. <laughs> you know, you've left yourself off your own list. Well, look, as far as I'm concerned, you're in the top 100. <laughs> I, uh, I was giving him suggestions in the back room before the show. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, David, how important is it for the community to celebrate achievements of Black North Carolina? Well, I think this is a special, special event. Some longtime heroes of mine are on that list. Uh, from the judiciary, uh, two former chief justices, right. um, yeah, Henry Fry, who was uh, Justice Fry, very influential. His wife Shirley, I'm, I'm just I love her, and she loves me back. Yeah. Uh, but but then we we have folks, uh, we have ministers who've been influential to me, Dr. Scovens, Sir Walter Mack, and you know I start naming people I'm going to forget. But it's a very very impressive group. The other thing that Richard has done really well over the years is bridged communities in, in our area in a very, very impressive and, and artful way. Absolutely. And Griff, you know, there's so much negative news uh, these days about things, and, and, and yet this is very inspirational, isn't it? It's very inspirational. These are inspirational leaders, uh, Jim, that have impacted the state but also they have in, impacted their individual communities. Um, and so uh, I think that, that this group of people is incredibly impressive. As David said, I know one that caught my eye was uh, Coach Bill Hayes, who just recently right. um, spoke at our law firm. Yeah. And you talk about inspirational. Yeah. And you talk some, about somebody that's had an impact own individuals throughout his life. Un unbelievable. Absolutely. I want to put, before time gets away, I want to put a bunch of stuff on screen here. Uh, Black Business Inc. Power 100, Thursday, June 8th. That's at 7 p.m. at the Tanger Center. Tickets are available from Ticketmaster, but I also want to put up uh, the website that Richard mentioned, uh, Black Business Inc. That's I-N-K dot com. Please do that. 
and that gives you information about the magazine as well. And if you ever should need the services of these uh, Daggett Shuler gentlemen, who are good friends of the show, uh, you can go to daggettshulerlaw.com or you can call 336-724-1234. Guys, I appreciate everything, and Richard especially, congratulations on the 20th anniversary. Thank you so much, Jim, and thank you for having me. My pleasure. We'll be right back after this. You know, it's hard to believe the Safe Sober program has been going strong for over 30 years. And over 600,000 students have made the pledge to stay safe and sober on prom night. You know, Griff, it's had a huge impact on our community. Yeah, you're right, David. And now we're making sure the message continues year round. So everyone can join us in supporting our students. Learn more and take the pledge at safesober.com, sponsored by Daggett Schuler. Hi, I'm Jim Longworth, reminding you that Try It Today is now streaming on WFMY Plus, available free on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Back now on uh, Try It Today, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about stroke, being aware of stroke, the signs and symptoms and treatments, and we do that with a good friend of ours who's been on the show before. We always like to have her back. Debbie Moser is, uh, of course, among other things, a nurse. She's the Director of Staff Development and Stroke Coordinator at Northern Regional Hospital in Mount Airy. Good to see you again. Thank you. It's nice to be back. What are the risk factors for stroke? Um, there are several, but the three main risk factors are high blood pressure, and diabetes and uh, high cholesterol and also atrial fib, atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular heartbeat. Right. That is one of the very highest risk factors for stroke. And usually people that are in AFib and, and some other conditions, they keep up with that anyway with their doctor. But as far as high blood pressure, a lot of people don't go regularly to have that checked, right? And they should. Right. And I, I see people over and over, you check their blood pressure and it's high. And they say, oh, it's okay. It, it stays that way. And then you have to do patient education to explain that that creates long-term damage to let the blood pressure ride that high. Right. It See, damages the vessels in the brain. Another good reason to at least go, what, once a year to have, Absolutely. To, if not more. Um, what are some of the symptoms that you would see in someone that is having a stroke? How would you know? Well, um, we use the um, Be Fast uh, to teach everyone about strokes. So the B stands for a balance. It's a sudden loss of balance. Um, you know, people get confused and they think they have vertigo. Right. Uh, the magic word for stroke is sudden. Any stroke symptom is going to have a very sudden onset. And so balance uh, is one of the things people can't, they say they feel like they're drunk when they're walking. Right. Um, the E is for eyes. They have a blurred vision suddenly or a loss of vision in one of the eyes or the fields. Um, F is for face. Uh, you look at their face and ask them to smile. And one side of their face may be drooping. A is for arm. You ask them to hold their arms out like this for a few seconds and you may see one of the arms drift. Gotcha. Um, S is speech. You ask them to say something like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. They may say a different word like truck, truck, and, and they get, get right. very frustrated because yeah. they know what they want to say, but they can't get those words and out. And this, this happens suddenly? Very suddenly, okay. yes. And T is very important. It's time. We have to know the precise time that these symptoms begin. I want to, I want to circle back to time in a different way in just a second, but first, when you come into an emergency department, emergency room, I mean, who, who would assess whether you're really going through that or not? We train everyone from the registration folks at the front door. If the patient comes in and says anything remotely related to stroke symptom, they're immediately routed to our triage nurse and then taken directly back to a physician. Uh, if the ambulance is bringing the patient in, then they will screen the patient and let us know prior to arrival so that our team is always ready. And the most, uh, again, I, I promise I was going to circle back to time. Why is it so important for someone who thinks they're having a stroke or is having a stroke, for they or their family member or loved one, to get them to the hospital or call the ambulance or something quickly? Why is the time factor so important? Because one of the primary treatments we give, you know, with a stroke that's caused by a blood clot, we have to treat that with a clot buster drug. And that drug is very powerful. And it has to be given within a specific time frame, within three to four and a half hours of the onset of symptoms. 
And if you go outside that four and a half hours, you can actually cause a patient to bleed in the brain. So we have to be very, very careful. The sooner the patient gets to the hospital, the better the outcome they're going to have because the sudden symptoms begin when the blood flow to the brain is suddenly occluded. Right. Brain cells begin to damage then. If it's a large occlusion, you lose two million neurons a minute. Mm -hmm. Two million neurons a minute. So we have to limit that damage to the brain. Very important to get in quickly. I want to put up on screen, choosenorthern.org is a general website, choosenorthern.org for all sorts of information. Please get checked out. Don't fool around with this if you think you're having those symptoms or if your loved one is. And uh, Debbie, I appreciate all the, the great information. Hope you come back soon. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back after this. Need help buying food? Everyone needs help sometimes. Food Nutrition Services may be able to help you buy food and free up your money for other expenses, such as utilities and medicine. To receive FNS assistance, households must meet income limits. You may be able to get assistance even if you own a home, car, land, property, or have a retirement plan or money in the bank. Second Harvest Food Bank of Northwest North Carolina team members can help you with the application process over the phone. To receive help or if you have any questions, call 336-422-7758. Back now on Try Today, always glad when we can spend a few minutes uh, with this gentleman who is busy, 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 and you're going to find out why if you don't already know. We're talking about, of course, Kevin Baker, Executive Director director of the uh, Piedmont Triad International Airport. You are always doing something. There's always something going on at the airport, so you literally are busy, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we're going to have, I, I think you had a, a recent announcement I want to hear from in just a minute, but before we get to that, um, let's talk about something we've never talked about before, which is artwork at the airport. Now, tell me about the art program. Yeah, so a number of years ago, probably close to 10 years ago now, we created an art program where local artists can submit their work um, to a group of folks that we have put together from the entire triad region um, who are art folks and who have that expertise. And they consider the the submissions that have been made. and, And we have rotating Uh, art around the airport and we actually have a program so that folks can stop and pick up one of the programs and go do a self tour of all of those if they want to. Uh, I think it's been a real improvement to the airport. Yeah now these we don't have to get way into this but just is it a difficult thing to to get accepted or are there guidelines or what? Well I think that you know they have to be good artists obviously because they're, (laughs) they're they're putting their their work in front of people who are uh, who are artists and who are uh, you know folks who are very uh, proficient in that field, and so in order to be selected, I think that it has to be good work without a question. There's something else we haven't covered before. I was interested in. You sent me an email one day. We were talking about accessibility programs uh, and initiatives at the airport. Now, what, what all does that include? Yeah, I, I mean, we have an awful lot of programs for folks that are autistic, for instance. Um, yeah, there are uh, for for folks who would be interested in this. You know, whether it's children or adults, um, folks who feel like they might need some extra help when they're in the airport can stop at any of our information booths, and there are um, sort of discrete things that they can pick up, such as a lanyard or a button that they wear. For which all of the the folks in the terminal, the airlines, our folks, the people who work in the restaurants and the the stores are aware that that means that this person might need some extra help. That's one program. Um, there's another program where we've got some, we've got a product that it's basically a bag of things that can help an autistic person who might be in a crisis, maybe due to a fire alarm going off or to there being bad weather or, or just a cancellation of a flight, who knows? And those are pre-positioned at each airline and each of our volunteer stations and the police and fire uh, also to help you know in a, in a crisis. And finally, um, the Delta Airlines every year does a great program um, where they invite folks that have autism to come in and they actually walk them through the entire process of getting on an airplane wow. so that they can understand, the f- they can get past the fear of flying at least to the point of getting on the plane, sitting down in a seat, going through security, everything. So right. Really uh, good one, stuff. The, one last thing before we get to the, the big announcement is uh, Wi-Fi and charging stations. I've had somebody ask me one day, uh, you know, we just moved into the area. What about that? Yeah, so we've had charging stations ever since we remodeled the upper level. You know, all of the seating surfaces in the in the hold rooms have chargers underneath them. Um, there's 
all sorts of other places where you can charge tables that have charging devices on them, et cetera, even the ones where you just lay your phone on top of it and it charges them. We strive to make sure that we have the fastest Wi-Fi. We keep looking at what our competitors have out there to try and make sure that it's all about speed constantly. And when as our devices get it, you know, more and more improved, you need more and more speed. So Before time runs out, uh, something new? Yeah, just yesterday we had the announcement from Silver Airlines providing service. It's a Florida-based airline that serves Florida and the Caribbean area, and then they're moving northward. Um, they're going to be serving our market in the Nashville market into Orlando. Great. So this is going to be great service, and you know we, we hope the folks will embrace this company and get out there and fly it. If we don't fly it, we'll lose the service. So you know we've got to use it or we'll lose it. All right. Uh, up on screen, flyfrompti.com is the website where you can find out all sorts of information about the services that are available there and flight information as well, flyfrompti.com. Kevin Baker, thanks for stopping by, sir. Thanks again, Jim. All right. We'll be right back after this. Fly easy, fly PTI. Hi, I'm Jim Longworth, reminding you to catch my column, Longworth at Large, and Yes Weekly every week. It's available throughout the triad, or you can go online, yesweekly.com. Back now on uh, Try Today, and uh, we have with us Mr. Theater. We're always glad when he drops by and can spend a few minutes with us. Of course, I'm talking about Dave Briggs, director of High Point Theater. Welcome once again. Thanks, Jim. Always great to be here. I want to, before we have a lot of stuff to get to because of the new season, I want to talk about some of the shows. So, but very briefly, I want to ask you something about parking because it, there's so much going on in the High Point area. And you, know, you got the ballpark and you've got all sorts of things that ever since the pandemic has sort of subsided, there are a lot more people downtown and everything. Now, sure. so the question is, hey, I want to come to High Point Theater. Is there a good place to park? Well, absolutely. And most of it's free which is even better. So uh, the, the High Point Theater is located at 220 East Commerce Avenue, and it's in the giant IHFC building. So we're the nicest theater in the basement of a furniture showroom you'll ever find. Directly across what we call Mendenhall Transportation Terminal, which is this really cool glass enclosed area, right. is a parking lot that is in basically the showplace parking lot, which is a, a giant furniture showroom as well. That's all free. It holds like 320 cars. And uh, then the city hall has, has a parking lot right across Hamilton Street. And adjacent to Hamilton Street, across the street from Commerce, there's a, a large lot behind what's called the new classic building. And all that's free, and, and there's not, you free. don't have to walk very that's far. That's right. And, and you can actually find uh, directions to parking on our website. So if you say, you know, plan to go, go to that, look at that, and kind of you know, plan out where you're going to park. You can drop your drop your guests off at the front door and go park and then walk across. Right, right, yeah. My wife dropped me off there one time and never came back. It's a, it's a different know, I warned her well, it's about a different that. segment. Anyway, all right, now let's get to the new season. Yep. The first is Napoleon Dynamite, Sunday, September 3rd. What's that all about? I am so excited about this. So Napoleon Dynamite really is a cult classic film. And it, it's the, the true underdog in high school kind of film. Um, Napoleon is kind of this weird, yeah, yeah, duh, okay, it's fun. Yeah. He uh, befriends a, a, a Hispanic student who moves into the area, and, and his name is Pedro, and he's living with his uncle Rico. And um, so, I mean, the, 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 the movie's very funny. There's a lot of, there's some dance in it that we're going to do a lot of contests with. So we're actually going to show the film. Oh, okay. We're going to show the film, we're we'll screen the movie. Right. And then the, the, the screen will raise up, and basically, the 1970s living room of Napoleon Dynamite will be behind that. Wow! We're gonna have we're gonna be selling tater tots and corn dogs and and all kinds of fun stuff. That's but, neat. Uh, but John Hedder, uh, John Grice, who played Uncle Rico, John Hedder played Napoleon Dynamite. Right. John had, uh, Grice played Uncle Rico, and, um, and Ephraim, they're gonna be there. Ephraim Ramirez, who played Pedro, will, are gonna be there. Oh man, that's great! It's gonna be so much fun. September 23rd, the players. The players. Now the players is is uh, three three. Um, musicians from Chicago, 
not from the city, but from the band Chicago, and the former drummer from Earth, Wind, and Fire. And these guys wow. are amazing. I can't wait to see this show. Love that music. Uh, oh, I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right or not. Ofrenda. Thursday, October 26th. Ofrenda, and it's a celebration of the, La Dea de los Muertos, Muertes, uh, which is the Day of the Dead. And in Mexican culture, the they will create a, um, a shrine inside a home to celebrate the dead and passing those who have passed before. This particular show features the, the Ballet Folklorico of Los Angeles, who was here about a year ago, as well as uh, Mariachi Garibaldi, when they are phenomenal. And uh, it's going to be a great time. Will Downing, Saturday, November 4th. Will Downing is just, he's the, he's the king, of soul, uh, king of soul. Uh, what a voice and a wonderful band. Can't wait to have Will back with us. And it's been about six years since he was here. He's phenomenal. All right, great lineup and a lot more coming up. And you can find out about all the things coming up if you go to the website, highpointtheater.com. Love that website, whether you have questions about the shows, the performers, the parking, whatever. For tickets, call 887-3001. And uh, Dave, will you hang around for the round table? Sure. All right. We'll be right back after this. What are you waiting for? Your future awaits at Guilford Technical Community College. Make amazing happen. Every cookie sold in the Girl Scout cookie program helps girls learn lifelong lessons in people skills, decision making, money management, goal setting, and business ethics. It's amazing how much you can learn from a cookie. The Girl Scout Cookie Program. Think outside the box. Back now on Try Today. Just about time for the round table. But a quick shout out to the good folks here at Senior Botanical Garden. Come on out here to the garden in Kernersville. It is beautiful. You can rent the facility. You can do all sorts of things here. And if you were here right now, you'd be watching the round table. And right next to me, on the right, but always political left, Ogie Elman, the great broadcaster and journalist. Dave Briggs, director of High Point Theater, stayed over from the previous segment. Keith Granberry, founder of Helping Hands Consultants. Guys, two Michigan school districts have just banned backpacks because students keep packing guns in them. As a preventative measure, would you like to see all North Carolina schools ban backpacks, perhaps even clear ones? Ogie. No, I, you know, I hate to say this. I really do. But I think it's, we've about to come to the point where we're going to have metal detectors at the entrance. Which I've been calling for. I, I've been against it for all these years yeah, until it. now. Dave, I mean, yeah, I, I'd like to see them go to the clear backpack. The other thing I'd like to do is for them to give students a, a little more time between classes so that they can actually go to a locker. Interesting. Keith. Yeah, I, I don't think they should ban backpacks, but I think they should be metal detectors. Last week, a federal judge in Richmond ruled that it's unconstitutional to ban young people under age 21 from purchasing a gun. If that ruling stands up, are you okay with an 18-year-old buying a gun, Ogie? Uh, there's an easy solution for that. Let them join the Army if they want a gun. But not 18. Good, yeah, good point. Dave? Well, it is unconstitutional to not allow them to have a gun, but I do think they, there should be significant background checks. All right. Should, you think it should be 21 and not 18, Keith? I absolutely think it should be 21. All right. Last week, a fugitive tried to outrun officers by driving the wrong way on a Winston-Salem Beltway at 120 miles per hour. He then hit another car head-on and killed two young people. Guilford County already has banned speed, high-speed chases and some other localities. Would you like the state legislature to do that as a statewide Man, no more high speed chases, Ogie? You know, I don't know. When I was in Jamestown, I covered a story, a horrible story of the state trooper chasing a guy down Business 85, doing about 100, and hit a woman making a left and killed the grandmother and the granddaughter. Right. It was just a horrible story, and it just kind of got me to thinking do they really need that? I mean, is it no. that important that. I don't think to, so chase a speeder. You can always radio ahead too, Dave. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure how you ban it, because if, if an officer's job is to enforce the law, they, they may have to actually chase somebody to, to get them to slow down. Key. I think there's other ways. I think, you know, these high-speed chases are incredibly dangerous. And they not only in dangerous to 
the, pe the, the officers, but to people who are innocent people. Absolutely. I think you have to do something different. Absolutely. And like I said, you can radio ahead for help and whatever. Currently, nine states allow physician-assisted suicide. Vermont is the latest one to join that list. Very quickly, guys, do you think North Carolina lawmakers should legalize or will legalize physician-assisted suicide, Ogie? You know, Janet and I have talked about this a lot, about if, we're, if our quality of life gets to where there is none left, we're going to drink the hemlock, really? whether it's physician-assisted or not. But I think it should, yeah. It should be legal. Dave? It's a real ethical issue, and, and it is about quality of life. I, I don't, really don't know. I don't think the question is, will they pass it? I don't believe that will happen. Key, uh, I, I don't think it should be. I, I think that uh, so many people, even if they're uh, still here, there's so many people that love love you and I think you, you I don't think you should be doing suicide period all right in an effort to reduce both noise and air pollution an increasing number of cities across the country are banning the use of gas powered uh, blowers and lawnmowers would you guys like to see triad area towns and cities ban gas powered lawnmowers and blowers Ogie uh, I don't think you can <clears throat> ban it I mean I think you could phase it out there's a lot more electric powered Appliances on the market now, I think it'll eventually phase out. All right, noise and environment, two issues. What do you think? Well, I got to tell you what, some of those electric blowers are very loud. They really so are. So I, I don't think you, you ban those. That's a, that's a big industry. Key. Is there something else we could be banning, like assault weapons? We're talking about <laughs> we, Man, we, lawnmowers. This is, this is what we're talking about, lawnmowers. We're going to get rid of lawnmowers. <laughs> we're going to get rid of yeah. lawnmowers. We're going to keep assault weapons. That's right. Okay. All right look, Sounds out. great. Yeah, States absolutely. like Florida and Arizona now proposing some something called the stupid motorist law so that during a weather emergency, any motorist who gets stuck driving across a flooded roadway would pay a $2,000 fine to help cover the cost of rescue personnel. Would you like to see North Carolina pass a stupid motorist law, Ogie? Yeah, I, I'm not against that. Yeah, I've, I've seen that happen with there's already cars stuck in the and water they go and they anyway. go on through anyway. Dave. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that either. I would like them to enforce regular laws, but uh, yeah. Yeah, driving through the snow like that? Yeah, should we uh, going right through the flood there? Stupid motorist laws. Should we have that? I think we should have stupid people laws because <laughs> people do stupid things. Just you know, if you do something stupid, just there should be a penalty well, for why that. Why are you looking at me? I'm, 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 just, I'm, just, I'm just saying. That. I'm just and, saying. Uh, fi dude. Yeah. Finally, <laughs> finally, organizers in Philadelphia say they'll hold the annual naked bike ride in August. <laughs> The naked bike ride helps to promote fuel conservation. Guys, have you ever have you ever ridden naked on a bike, Ogie? Yeah, I have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in college, I did that one time. You did time. that? Yeah. Uh, Dave there was a story behind it, but you no, know. No, we don't want to. As, yeah. as, as the story goes, in October of, of 1960, I was about three years old, almost four, and my mother was on the phone, and I was really anxious to go ride. And you so I stripped naked and went out and rode my trike, and the neighbors complained. Yeah, and the neighbors complained. <laughs> but Ogie, Ogie was older when he did it. He was. Keith, have you ever ridden a bicycle naked? No, no, but o Ogie and my man had neck one older, one younger. <laughs> nah, that's too much nakedness for me. You're not I'm going to stay with clothes on. All right. Well, that's all. That's, that's all the time we have. Oh, except for this. Last week in Philadelphia, this truck was driving through there, and, and the truck had in its payload, it had $100,000 worth of dimes, and he got robbed. The thieves got away with all of it, and the police came out to the driver and said, what are you letting them take $100,000 worth of dimes for? And the driver said, I guess I don't have any cents. <laughs> so <it's> cents and... <laughs> Might have been a Mel Brooks movie somewhere. May all your naked bike rides right. be naked, filled with potholes. Naked Bike Riders Association. Right. We'll see you next week. <laughs>